Right, we're back in the Almost Aviation new experimental cockpit. This is the latest setup, this is very temporary. I've got the second 32 inch screen mounted. It's not mounted at the crazy angle that we have the small one mounted at simply because because it's just a very crude experiment. I'm trying to see if that closer to 90 degree orientation gives me much better spatial orientation but also just the way that the cockpit's set up at the moment I can't actually tilt it downwards so um, I'm going to try it out we're at a little airport in the United Kingdom this is Boland Fell or is it Boland Forest Gliding Club we don't have real world weather on I'm just going to take off flight to another small airfield Crooks Farm I think the, the other one's called Look at the wind sock, the wind's being nice to us. We're going to get us out on the strip and we'll. Uh... We're going to take off on the grass beside that visible strip there. Uh, we're going to dial in the destination EGIO, that's where we want to go. Direct to activate so that's 11 and a half miles from here. We won't be heading out on 170, so that's pretty much slight right turn as we take off. So let's get out of here. Kind of bumpy. We should have plenty of room to get airborne. Slightly downhill as well. We're up there just holding the nose down a little bit. Get us a bit of speed. Turn us onto course. Go up to about 1500 feet, maybe 2000 feet AGL. Some nice views out here. We're up in the north west of England. Lancashire, I believe we are. So, what I'm noticing right away is this, this wraparound view is great, but there's uh, some caveats there. And the caveats are First of all, the, as, as I was saying in my previous video, that view is too high. It's not so much that it's too high, but it leaves the, the desired effect incomplete because we're cut off. It's actually higher than the height of the door frame, even. Um, ideally, we want a, a downward view as well, which is why we're so intent on having these downward sloping screens, ultimately. The other thing is this, because these are 32 inch screens, that screen's actually quite close to me, and so the resolution does tend to show, you know, it's not ideal. Second thing is, having it at 90 degrees, particularly because it's so close, you know, it's washed out, the viewing angle is inappropriate. I've tilted it out by maybe 5 degrees, maybe even 10 degrees there. It's still a little bit washed out. So ideally we'd want bigger screens for this setup. Um, maybe we can get away without the tilt, maybe we can just position the screens flat but a little bit lower, maybe about 25% of the screen height lower. It is good to turn on the track IR now and then just because we can get a bit of a, you know, we can get some of that downward view. But um, by and large, we can keep the track eye off. We've got the up and down cockpit position. As we're coming into this small strip, which is very hard to find, there is, uh, it's, it's in a little village, and there's a church. There's quite a prominent church that we should, we should see. Well, it's prominent. Relatively, it's still kind of kind of hard to pick up. But if we fly to the right hand side of that church, that puts us pretty much on the threshold of the airstrip. But it's a tiny strip, 
probably, probably quite marginal for this aircraft. This is the Cessna 172. <laughs> but we'll give it a go, because why not? It's a sim after all. So in this situation, the track IR is really helpful because you can get out there, you've got this six degrees of freedom, you can look around the door pillars and everything. You can get your head well and truly out of the cockpit and uh, try and figure out where you are. Okay, I've had my orientation now. The church is just off the left wing now. Check it out there. And if we fly around the back of it, that puts us on the strip, which is now, now just behind the left wing, which you probably can't see at this distance. So let's see if we can do it with the track IR off. There's the church on the left wing. You might not see my head might be in the way. So speed's good. We're at about 80 knots. Alright, we're on 60 knots, flaps 20, in fact we're going to go to flaps full, because this is a very short strip, and there's trees at the threshold this end which, which don't help. Right, I'm going to pause the track IR now, so we, we're doing this without distraction. I'm going to have to hook it round through this gap in the trees, going pretty slow. Power off. Just trying. We are going uphill here, so we'll stop very quickly. I hope. Yeah, that was probably still <laughs> rather too long for comfort. Oh yeah, we can just about turn it. So not too much modelling on the ground at this strip. I think this is pretty much like a default strip with a bunch of cones and things placed here. That's the... Um, a lot of these Neil Birch strips are like that. But they, this, and I think they're using default objects. But still it gives it a bit of character. And it kind of makes it a little bit easier to, to find these strips from the air. Because they've got stuff placed. Again, very much like the Aussie X Australian strips. So there it is, my first experiment with the multiple screens at 90 degrees. Um, pretty effective, I think. So we'll keep on playing with that.